Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to our Christmas Day online worship service. Well, I didn't really think that I'd be saying the words online um, for quite some time, but here we are back doing our online online ministry again. Um, we were doing so well as well, wasn't it? It was so wonderful after the convention. The numbers seem to be increasing and uh, just being in the church, I tell you, I've sometimes watched back the videos and the videos are nothing compared to being in the church itself. Um, it was absolutely great. It's been great. The, 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 the worship has been vibrant, the praise and the, the, the people that have been coming to serve have been so encouraging. Ushers, the video people, the sound people, the musicians, the choir, the uh, multimedia people, the, um, the the security people, the moderators, the dif different people serving and coming and helping in different in different areas. It's been the cleaners. It's been absolutely, absolutely brilliant to see people coming out and serving and worshiping together again. And um, I'm, I'm so sad that we're having to go back to online um connections for a while uh but what could we do the virus has gotten so so contagion uh and uh, it's really affected quite a lot of our people including myself so here i am we haven't got i haven't got the new the normal <laughs> lights and uh haven't got the normal um backgrounds that i would normally have i'm locked away in a, in a room I'm not locked away exactly but um separated from my family because I unfortunately I, I came out with a, a positive result and um, really haven't been feeling that great as well so um, what can I say you know um, you know and it's not been fun it's not been fun today my one of my daughters my youngest daughter she threw me a bar of chocolate you know from the door just didn't want to come in get close to me or anything you know so just here you go so these are the challenging times we have to deal with. And we, we want to be thankful as well. We want to be thankful for uh, to God for keeping us and uh, for keeping us. Uh, although many of us are unwell, we want to thank God that he's helped us to, um, to the symptoms have not been as serious as they could be for the people that I've spoken to or heard about so, so far. And let's pray that we will continue to improve and that this thing will be broken in Jesus name and so that we can come back to worshiping together. Amen. Uh, and not just that, but just that we can have um, community and relationship and fellowship and, 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 and be the people that God has called us to be and to do the things that he wants us to do. Um, and whatever happens, we can't let anything stop our mission and stop us from achieving the things that God wants us to achieve. So we will do that. We will do that in Jesus' name. Um, so we're going to be online uh, tomorrow as well. Uh, we're going to be online at 10 o'clock. And then on watch night service, 10 p.m., we're going to be online then again. Um, and we just invite you all to please do come in. Um, again, it's not the same, but we, we would really love to have you all with us, um, worshipping God um, with us at Watch Night Service. Um, and then throughout January, uh, for the safety of the people that attend our church, um, we won't be having live gatherings um, throughout that month. Uh, the, the virus is not going to go away so quickly. Um, uh, so we're going to we're gonna just keep safe um, for that first uh, month and then God's spirit we'll be able to see how things are and hopefully we pray we'll be able to come back together to um, have live gatherings and live services live services together but let's always just keep our faith high keep trusting in God keep worshiping God keep believing and knowing that God is with us amen yes 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 so we're gonna sing our hymn this week it's gonna be a Christmas carol in fact it's one of my very favorite ones hymn number 42 heart the herald angels sing Hallelujah, glory be to the newborn king. Here we go, say. Of the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy. 
seed man God will sing and us reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Half the herald angels sing Glory to the new Christ the everlasting Lord, Lord. Late in time, Late in time behold him come. He was the offspring, offspring of, of the virgins. Veiled in flesh, Lord. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead seen. Held in common deity, the deity. He's the He's man, man yeah. with man to dwell. Jesus, Jesus of, of man. man. so much fear, so much anxiety, so much uncertainty. Lord, we thank you that you are the steadfast line. You are our only hope. You are the truth. You are the way. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, you came into this world to be our savior. You loved us that much that you paid the, the price for our sin on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Our hearts are full of joy. Bless us this Christmas as we focus on you to celebrate you, Lord Jesus. Yes, you are the Son of the living God. We pray these things and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> I know that we're celebrating very differently tomorrow. However, I'd like to encourage us to bring our minds back to what this season is really, really about for us, and that's celebrating the amazing gift of love that God has given us. So let's all pray together. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to bear. Come and behold him. 
and we are prepared for that's the reason why God sent his son to our lives. So today my prayer for you is that you understand how loved you are, that you accept that love and that you enjoy that gift that he's given. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's Christmas and um some of us were hoping to, I'm sure, gather with our families and wider friends, uh, wider circles. Um, but because of the situation, those um, gatherings may have been uh, curtailed or, or, what's the word, um, uh, postponed um, for a little while. Whenever our family gather together, our wider family, which we were looking forward to doing, but we're unable to do today, um, we, we would normally... Um, have like a massive dinner together and we would at the table we would have those crackers and uh we'd all put on the crack uh, the party hats and everything like that and uh we still do that um but this year no crackers and in fact what i'm gonna do i'm gonna tell you a joke and this joke can be our cracker joke together so imagine us pulling a cracker and this is the joke that pops out of it i hope you like this it's the joke is this what do you call a person with no body and no nose? What do you call a person with no body and no nose? You, 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 you give up? Give up? Well, the answer is nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> oh my, I love that one. I love that one. I hope, I hope, I hope you're laughing. I hope you got that. Anyway, we're going to get into the word of God right now. Lord, please bless your word. Bless your word to our spirits. Give us a real lift. Encourage us. Build us up, Lord. Help us all to be encouraged today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to read from Luke, Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 11. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. And it says, In those days, Caesar Augustus, issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and lion of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me read that verse 11 one more time. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Oh, brothers and sisters, this is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We all are familiar with the nativity story. And um, I wonder if you could imagine with me for a moment if there was someone who, who looking at the story of Jesus' birth, but wanted it to be maybe a bit more appealing to certain sets of people. So maybe in, 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 in looking at the story, they would pick out certain issues or matters that they want to emphasize to get that appeal across. So, for example, someone may be thinking, well, Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes. 
The swaddling clothes could never be, never be just rags. Oh no, it had to be of the ilk of Louis Vuitton or Prada or or Burberry or something like this. But it was never ever gonna be because something simple. Because he is the King. Come on, he's the Messiah. So so maybe someone might come and look at the story of Jesus' birth and 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 they might just emphasize the clothes that the cloth that Jesus was. Was, was was wrapped in. Someone else might come along and they might say, well, ooh, you, you know, the, 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 they might be into animals and they might say, well, look, you know the donkey? The donkey that Mary was riding on to get to, to get to Bethlehem? That was no simple donkey that you find at Blackpool Pier. No, no, sir. These were probably the Arabian kind of donkeys which have a much beautiful poise and color and really stand out jesus would never be coming into town on a, on a kind of regular donkey no sir <laughs> can you imagine if that was the emphasis of someone if someone wanted to emphasize the animal that christ came into town or his mother came into town on or, or maybe someone else might have said might have focused on the on the shepherds and said hey you know the shepherds were self-employed entrepreneurs businessmen and businessmen were the first to come to see Jesus. So Jesus is into business. Jesus is into to, to an entrepreneur. Jesus is, can you imagine if someone or someone wants to focus on the clothes that he was wrapped in or focus on the animal that he was carried on or focus on the, the people, the visitors that came to visit him. Can you imagine? You and I know <laughs> that they'll be 100% missing the point. Way off the mark, way off the mark. Because it's not about what Jesus wore or who came to see him. It's about who Jesus was and what he came to do. And the Bible here says that today in the city of David, a savior is born. Hallelujah. A savior is born. You might say, well, Pastor, you know, I know you was over-exaggerating. But my brothers and sisters, look in this world today. A lot of people use the word Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and they're not celebrating anything to do with Jesus. Some people are atheists, they don't even believe in God, and they're saying Happy Christmas. I heard someone say on the TV the other day, Happy Happy Atheist Christmas, Christmas, Happy Atheist Christmas, or something like this. So really there has been a, a, a crazy um, pulling away from the, the point of that word. Listen, I understand where the date came from and I know there was a pagan celebration on that day. But whenever, whenever they're ready to take away the word Christ from in front of the words mass, if the words Christ and mass are together, I'm celebrating Jesus' birth coming into this world and his purpose and his mission. If they want to take it and make it something else that day, something else, well, listen, us Christians will be happy to move along to some other day. Because you know what? For us, Christmas is every single day. We celebrate the birth and coming into this world of Jesus and his mission every single day. My brothers and sisters, if we were to focus on the wrong things, we missed the point completely. Jesus came into this world to save. What did he come to save us from? from our sins, hallelujah. You see, sin is something that's very grievous to God. God hates vehemently, he hates sin. Sin is an offense to God. Sin, the Bible says, is lawlessness. And to be lawless means to break God's laws. It's to know that God has a standard. It's to know that God has a will. And it means to desire and to choose to go against what God wants and where God is leading. It's to know the right thing to do and to not do it. That is sin. The Bible also describes sin in the Greek, uh, Hermaton, and it, and, it, and it means to miss the mark. And I remember when I was um, at Centre Park one time, I tried out this thing called um, archery. I wanted to try archery and I saw you, what, it, what it is, they give you a bow and arrow and, and there's a, uh, maybe about 50 feet away from you, there's a, um, like a target. And in the centre is a red big dot and that's the bullseye. And your, the idea is at some point when the, the person who's giving you instructions will say to you, hit the bullseye. You've got to aim as best you can to hit that bullseye. Sometimes I hit it, sometimes I didn't. When you hit it, you feel good because you know you've done well. You've hit the mark. But when you miss the mark, you've failed. And that is what sin is. Sin is to fail to reach the required standard that God expects. God has a standard, a pass mark. 
And sin is to always come below that mark. Are you hearing me today, church? Sin is lawlessness. Sin is, is missing the mark. Sin is idolatry. Idolatry in that it's about finding something else that takes God's place. God is the creator of everything. He is the creator par excellence. Hallelujah. He knows everything. He has all the answers. For us to find or try to search out for the answer by some other means, by some other power, and even by our own selves. To, for us to think that we have a better opinion than God, that's idolatry. And guess who the, 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 the worship is? Guess who the idol is? It's us. We're worshipping ourselves. We're worshipping our opinions. We're worshipping our brains, our minds, our, our limited knowledge. And God knows all things, my brothers and sisters, my dear friends. God knows everything. God hates sin. Sin is breaking his law. It's breaking his standards, breaking his commandments. It's missing the mark. It's failing to hit the standard. Sin is idolatry. But it's also, it's also rebellion. And rebellion, for me, is, is the word rebellion, it kind of makes me understand that the rebels come from within the group. Excuse me. The rebels have to come from within the team. The rebels come from the country and they're fighting against the leadership. They're fighting against the government. And that's what it is to sin. We are fighting against the will of God. We're fighting against the standard of God. We're, we're fighting against the program of, of God. God has a desire. And we fail to even acknowledge it. That is sin. And my friends, God hates sin vehemently. And the Bible says, for unto us today, a savior is born. Jesus was born to save us from our sin and the consequence of our sin. Because the Bible says the wages or the consequence of sin is death. But hallelujah, God gives us the awesome gift of his son, and that's eternal life. I want to look at another passage of scripture. I want you to bear those things in mind, especially that Christ came to save us from our sin, because sin is the big problem, okay? But look over in this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Some of you are probably smiling when I'm reading this, this verse here, this passage in 1 Corinthians 15. You know, I was thinking about this at, you know, at Sister McKay's um, funeral the other day. So many people um, were speaking about how she could cook so well and so beautiful it's because she knew the ingredients people like her and other mothers in our church they know the ingredients they know what to put into the mix to put a smile on your face <laughs> and i've got a big smile on my face when these wonderful mothers my mum, my wife and my dear mothers in our church whenever i get to taste their sweet hand hallelujah 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to read from verse uh, 50. And it says this, watch. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable and mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible here says very clearly that flesh and blood will not make it into God's kingdom. Flesh and blood will never make it into God's heaven. No, no way. Remember that. Why won't flesh and blood make it into God's heaven? Why? Because flesh and blood is perishing. It's mortal. And that word in the Greek, it actually means it's decaying. We're in a state of decay. And the end of that decay is actually death. And the Bible says the last enemy will be death, will be destroyed, to be destroyed, is death. It's not going to have any place in God's kingdom. No human flesh and blood can make it into God's kingdom because humankind is perishing, it's decaying, and it will ultimately come to a point of death. But this verse down here, it says, it says this, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory. 
He gives us, who are flesh and blood right now, the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there's an ingredient. Like, see, I, I mentioned that these mothers, they know how to put the ingredients into the food to put a smile on your face. They know what to do to make you have a reaction. Well, sin causes the reaction. It causes the reaction of decay. It causes the reaction of things to perish. It causes death. The Bible says the wages or the price or the consequence of sin is death. But God's gift through Jesus Christ is eternal life. Hallelujah. Flesh and blood will not make it into heaven because we are prone to sin. But Jesus came into this world to die on the cross of Calvary for our sin. Jesus was the innocent lamb of God, innocent son of God. He did not deserve to die, did not deserve to go on the cross, didn't deserve to, to be punished for any sin because he never sinned at all at any time. But he went to the cross instead of us. He went on the cross on our behalf so that we wouldn't have to. He took our sin to the cross, my brothers and sisters. And he died and he rose again, hallelujah. And he grants us a wonderful, awesome victory. So I want you to see this for a moment. Sin is that ingredient, that terrible, terrible ingredient that causes the decay which leads to death. That will not ever get into God's kingdom. But I want you to see something and be, be blessed and encouraged by this beautiful passage here in um, 2 Corinthians chapter chapter um, 5, I think it is. Uh, let me just find this for you. And, and verse 20, 21, it says this. Listen, listen to this. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God made him, that is Jesus, who had no sin <laughs> to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, what the thing is this. We, we, are, we do sin, we do make mistakes, we do fall, but because we've confessed our sins to Christ, because in faith, we believe that Jesus is the only one that can save us. Because in faith, we believe that Jesus' death on Calvary, on the cross, is enough. It was God's desire and will so that we could be set free from the, the, the chains of sin and be freed, hallelujah, to have reconciliation with the Father. Because we have faith in this, we believe this and we repent. We ask Christ to forgive us of our sins and we turn around, we change our direction. And we, we're now pursuing and following Christ's likeness. We're trying to be like Christ. And because of this, we are in Christ. The Bible says that God positions us. God positions us in Christ. We, we are living in this world, do whatever we have to do. But as far as God is concerned, he has taken us and he has placed us in his son. So when we stand in God's court and God is about to bring down the anvil, he's about to bring down the hammer, and make his judgment, boom, he will say, not guilty, hallelujah. Not guilty, not guilty, because all the charges have been dropped, all the charges have been paid for, all the charges have been dealt with through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, hallelujah. What love, what awesome love. When we think about Christmas, my brothers and sisters, when we think about Christmas, let's remember that the Savior came, Jesus came, not just to be born, it's not, that's, not, that's not just the story, it's about his purpose. His purpose was to save us. His purpose was to die on the cross and to complete the will of God. So that by faith in him and by surrendering our lives to him, we might be found in Christ Jesus and receive the righteousness of God. When we stand in God's court, we are not guilty. We have a righteous standing because of what Jesus Christ has done. So that means, my brothers and sisters, that means that we have to live our lives pure. We have to be holy as he is holy. We, we try to be holy not to get righteousness, not to be saved, but because we are saved. It's because of who we are. You are a child of God. You're born again. You're washed in the blood. We cannot embrace and engage in sinful living, in sinful lifestyles because of who we are in Christ.
Lord, our Savior, Messiah, help us to always remember whom we are because of who you are and because of what you came in this world to do. Thank you that we have a new identity in Christ and that the old is gone and that, Lord, we are new creations in you. Help us to celebrate this fact, not of our own works or our own goodness, but because of your love and your mercy and your kindness. Remember especially, Lord, those of our loved ones who are bereaved in this season or who face this season of Christmas, Lord, without the presence of their dearly loved ones. Lord, it's a challenging time. But I pray that you'll give peace and assurance. Your word says that you comfort, Lord. You comfort those who mourn. So, Lord, we only can look to you. We can only cry unto you. And so I pray that you would comfort all those who are experiencing that sense of loss, Lord. And I pray that, Lord, you would have a special word in this season for your dear children. We thank you for coming to this world and for the salvation that you bring. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas. And Happy New Year. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.